All right, this week, uh, the Court of Claims Judge Elizabeth Gleischer issued a preliminary injunction which would temporarily halt the 1931 abortion ban to which Michigan would default if Roe versus Wade is overturned. It's a ruling that inspired a lot of questions, and in fact, they're now being asked by the state Supreme Court. So let's talk it over with Deborah LaBelle, who is the attorney for Planned Parenthood in this suit. Uh, Deborah, I'm so uh, glad that you've got time to talk to me today. I, I know you're still digesting the questions issued by the court, but one of the central questions, it seems, uh, one of their pre preeminent questions that I think a lot of people would ask is they're saying, look, shouldn't we wait until we have a ruling from the U.S. Supreme Court? Otherwise, this is all sort of an academic exercise, right? Well, they did ask that question, but but in the, the real point here in both the Planned Parenthood case and in the governor's case is that what we need is a decision from the Michigan Supreme Court about what our Constitution, what the Michigan Constitution provides for, and if it protects Michiganders, Michigan women and girls in their reproductive choices and freedoms. And independent of the U.S. Supreme Court, that's a question that needs to be answered no matter what happens with Dobbs. Because uh, we have our own constitution and our constitution provides for rights sometimes that are greater than what the federal constitution provides for. Sometimes the language is similar, but we have the right to interpret it differently. Yeah. And so it Never been done. I, I'm one of the other questions, though, sort of suggested. Um, I, I'm wondering if you think that this decision and your case that moved forward, that Judge Gleisher uh, issued her decision on earlier this week, did that now endanger the uh, the governor's argument and the broader question uh, that she was wanting the court to take up? Ha, ha, has one collided now with the other, which would be interesting because I think you probably would be a party to. Or are in favor of what the governor's pursuing as well. I don't think that they, they conflict or collide in any way. All, all of us are trying to get to the Michigan Supreme Court for this decision, whether it be the governor's case or whether it be our case or whether it be them joined together where the Michigan Supreme Court determines what the constitutional rights are. Uh, one of the first uh, criticisms of Judge Gleischer's decision that came from those who are uh, uh, against uh, abortion rights uh, was that she should have clearly recused herself as someone who has contributed to Planned Parenthood in the past. Uh, it, it's bad optics, I think, to many people, but shouldn't she have recu recused herself? So I would say absolutely not. We have rules on what judges are supposed to do and when they have conflicts that require them to recuse themselves. And none of those involve, um, you know, minor contributions to one of the parties over the years. If judges had to recuse themselves in every case in which they had done a contribution to a party, um, you know, it would be it would be problematic, and that's simply not the rule. And so the fact that a, a judge says, you know, I appreciate what Planned Parenthood has done over the years in terms of their counseling and they're providing a great deal of services, which they do to both men and women, um, young people, older people, and all sorts of areas. And the fact that a court appreciates that does not mean that they can't sit uh, neutrally on a question of whether the Constitution of the state of Michigan provides protections for abortion in Michigan. If, if Judge Gleischer had given money in the past to anti-abortion causes, wouldn't you have had a problem with her being the one to make the decision on this? I would not. I mean, I, I, I'm being honest here. Um, you know, that is not a question I would have asked um, because under the rules, it's not a basis for disqualification. Let me move on then to the decision itself. If we if we do get if we go back to the 1931 law, which was based on an 1846 law, I guess I, I'm still a little confused. It's not as cut and dry as to say, well, abortion is allowed or it isn't. There's this huge span in between. Uh, you know, polls show that most people are in favor of Roe versus Wade standing, but polls also show us that don't, most people aren't really wild about, say, third trimester abortions. Tell me where. Where, if this, if, if we get rid of the of, of the 1931 law, where does that leave us in Michigan? What really is allowed and what isn't? Well, that's one of the questions that we want the court to answer. And what we're saying is that the state constitution provides 
for protects individuals right to bodily integrity and what that means is that you have a right to make decisions yourself about um, a fundamental rights of choices with regard to reproductive um, choices in this state and the the for 50 years we have had roe v wade which says up to viability women can choose to terminate a pregnancy up to viability. And that's what we say the Constitution protects. Beyond that, it's a question between the, the doctor and the woman as to whether um, it's necessary for the health, safety, and life of the woman. Uh, the last question I wanted to ask you is about standing here. I've just got a little bit of time left. Uh, generally, if someone wants to challenge a state law, you expect the state attorney general to be the one to take up for that law. That's not happening in this case because Dana Nessel has already made it clear where she stands on this. But isn't it uh, a little wonky and weird uh, that there really isn't a party on the other side to take up the state's position? Well, I think that the question here, and, and it's the, the attorney general said, personally, um, I believe that there should be a constitutional right to abortion. And what the court said is there is standing here because we're challenging um, a, a statute that we say is unconstitutional. And courts in the past in Michigan have had these situations. And what the court said is, it's not a question of whether you two agree. I have to do an independent analysis of the law. And, um, and in fact, the attorney general and my clients did not agree on everything. Um, that, you know, there were disputes on a number of issues. The fact that the attorney general supports a constitutional right to abortion didn't mean that the court didn't have to do an independent review. It's the court's job. It's the judiciary to interpret our constitution. And the court did a very serious, deep, um, both in breadth and depth, yeah. uh, analysis of the rights. Yeah. And I would say that, let me just add one thing. Quickly. There were amicus briefs that pre pre presented the other side. There are amicus briefs filed by Right to Life, by Catholic Conference, and by some of the prosecutors. And they gave the court the perspective of a, a different position. Deborah, I, I'm afraid i got to get to a break. I, I know it's been a very, very busy week for you. I so appreciate your time. Thanks so much for being here.